Yes. Hey guys, it's ASMR Donut here. Real quick, you know I gotta shout out Mute City Customs. Cause you know, they're kind of the best in the freaking biz. You know who they are already, and freak typo cerisium, if that's how you say it. They're amazing at what they do. The controller mods, the controller customization, the colors, the consoles. It's so good, I can't recommend it enough. So make sure you go check them out. Submit an order, get a custom controller. It's the best one you'll ever have. If the pros use it, you should use it. You feel me, fam? While you're at it, you gotta make sure you buy some of their merch. It's Swag Daddy Mac Daddy. And use promo code The Bakery at checkout for 10% off. Oh my god! Uh, also, last bit of things I'm going to say before the interview. Make sure you go to my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash youngdonut and hit that follow button. We only need one more follower for the giveaway. I'm at 199. Oh my god. Then you can win a custom controller from Mute City Customs. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's crazy. Oh my god. Okay, I'm going to go now. Okay, this has been ASMR Donut. Enjoy the podcast. Peace. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to The Bakery, your favorite and probably only focused into podcast featuring the youngest donut of them all. And with me today are some hometown heroes that just, they just, they just do my heart well. Uh, We're going to have a fourth resident coming in eventually, as you will be able to see here on our screen, uh, our man Patches, but he is not here with us at this current moment. So right now, I would love to introduce our homies, the Manalord, Airwave, and Jmook, otherwise known as Malcolm Tuffolo, Tuffalo, God damn it, Eric Garb, and Jake Diarado RV. Oh my God, Arvorano. Oh my God, I am such a failure with names. I can say them right in post. What's that? I said, didn't you ask about the names? I literally ask every time beforehand for them to like give me the name so I can try it, and then I just mess it up. It's definitely like (laughs) scripted. It's scripted, I promise. (laughs) So how are you guys doing? What's up, everyone? Doing pretty well. Happy to be here. That's pretty well, and I'm happy you're here. Yep, likewise. Doing doing good. Happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me on. Of course. Thank you so much. And I'm assuming Jake's just kind of kind of gone at the moment, so hopefully he'll be I returning he shortly. Muted, so yeah. yeah, he's kind of muted right now in the channel, so we're just going to assume he'll come back shortly. So, as, I guess in the meantime, Malcolm, who is Airwave, for those that don't know, and uh, Eric, a.k.a. the Manalord, for those that don't know. If you guys want to go ahead and give introductions about who you are to the lovely viewers that might not know. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll start. Um, my name's Airwave. Uh, I am a Capital Region Smash player. Uh, mainly a Project M player, although I do, uh, I did start in Melee, so that's where my background is. Uh, I've been playing Smash probably for close to, must be close to four years at this point. Uh, maybe three and a half going on four years. I've been a TO for the last three years, um, doing stuff for, uh, what was Next Level Smash, uh, some stuff for Pastime Legends, RPI, and right now my big project is, uh, CGC, Community Gaming Celebration. Nice, nice. You've been all Tell over the place. That real quick. Oh yeah, huge shout outs to that real quick. We'll get into that for sure, but yeah, huge shout outs to CGC. My man Malcolm, killing it out there. Well, I'm alright, yeah, I'm the Manalord, so I've been playing Smash Brothers on and off for probably a decade. Um, the past few years it's been on for Smash Brothers. I haven't just been playing as a competitor, but also a tournament organizer out here in Syracuse, New York. Um, and in a similar vein to Airwave, he's got a big one CDC coming up. I got two big events coming up, Syracuse Comic Con, that's September 23rd, and Cusetown Town Beatdown at Retro Game Con, everybody's favorite, Ooh. in November on the 18th. And more details at Syracuse Smash Facebook to check out. Yeah, make sure you guys check that out. All the links to these guys, uh, the Facebook pages, the event pages, will all be in the description of the YouTube VOD later on. If you guys want to check any of these things out, uh, just... Just wait till the video's up. I'll, I'll have the links there. I can't exactly copy paste everything into the chat unless unless I do. And in which case, it'll just no be in work. the chat. <laughs> we'll figure it out one way or the other. That actually went by so much faster since Jake's just gone again. God damn it. But uh, you're saying you've been playing for you're saying on and off for almost a decade now. Yeah, I'd say that's right. So um, 
I kind of got my first star in high school. When I was in high school, that was 2006. Mm -hmm. I saw the Ken and Ize video from Most 3, their epic set where Ize finally beats Ken in singles competition. Right. And that's what, well, started, that's it. That's what started it for me. So, that, so the first couple of years there I played, but then... You know, I, I took some off during college because the social stuff takes it over, having fun, things like that. And now the past few years, you guys should all know what I've been up to these past few years. So of course, it's the road I took. Nice, nice. Yeah, I was gonna say because I've talked to a couple people before in these uh, in these interviews where they talk about the breaks that they've taken and like why they've taken them, and that that sounds like one of the like primary reasons. A lot of the time, it's like oh, school gets in the way. I have other things I need to. <clears throat> focus on and smash is just not one of those things that you can just i don't know mix mix together so easily you know as as some actually can yep and i and i got into it when i was getting into it mm -hmm. i was, it was on the cusp of brawl coming out so when i was the most passionate the game was the most dead yeah so then, like, right after that period i took that break and then thank god it it turned back around we came back i gotcha yeah. and then with malcolm Didn't... you were oh sh oh just oh jake's back Holy moly! You yeah. missed me. You missed me mispronouncing your last name, which was quite hilarious. I'm over it. It's all right. I'm very glad yeah. you are. If you want to give a quick introduction about who you are, real quick, go right ahead. Uh, yeah, I could do that. Um, my tag obviously is JMook. I hail from Binghamton, New York, which is further downstate than most regions here. Uh, it's about an hour and a half away from Syracuse, and I'm playing for about. It's getting close to the three years right now. Um, I started in the fall of 2014. First tournament was uh, up in Cortland with my friend Sean, who um, hosted a tournament with his friends and buddies to raise a for a fundraiser. Hmm. And from there, I met, came up to Syracuse for the bi-weeklies, met Eric, of course, you know. Even back then, the scene was still rising. Like, I don't know if Mana remembers the amount of entrance, but it was like close to 60, 70. Yeah, yeah. I think that was, was that right before Wii U? So PM and Melee were the only options? Is that when that was? Yeah, that's that's about that time. That was a good time. Damn. <laughs> so, and then looking back on it, um, Malcolm, you were saying you came in about four four years ago now? That's when you yeah, started? I was one of the doc kids. So whenever the documentary uh, I, I was right almost immediately after it came out a couple of my friends decided that they wanted to uh, start playing Smash and um, I just jump on the bandwagon people do things I want to do it too and you started with PM? Mm -hmm. I started with Melee oh okay, okay. I played uh, Melee for about my first year and then when I moved in with, uh, with Tristan with DLG um, he was a brawl player so he always tried to convince me to play Brawl, and I wanted to play Melee, so we decided on PM because it was middle ground. Fair enough. Yeah. You got all the characters. Mm-hmm. Got all the characters, and it was uh, the engine he was more used to. And at that point, Sheik was literally the same character. So. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jake sounded like he, he knows that one. He knows that. Oh, I remember that. You had My, um, Did you have days in PM? I had a similar experience where... My transition into the competitive scene, it went from Brawl Chic, where I learned like little like tricks on YouTube. You know, it was my first time looking something up mm -hmm. along with the doc, which I obviously watched. Actually, I think I watched the doc a day after it was uploaded, or maybe the night it was uploaded, the very first episode, mm -hmm. which was insane for me because I had no idea at like, you know, right. anything about it. So I went from Brawl Chic to PM because I learned, found out about PM. And then I finally bought um, a melee disc for like eighty-five bucks. Holy you know, shit! You, you know those prices. You know how they are. True, true. But that's how I got. It. That's that was my transition. Nice. Slowly but surely, from the worst game to one of the best. <laughs> yeah, careful, careful. <laughs> well, You're gonna make some people yeah. mad. I don't. I don't think there are any brawl players left to get mad. Well, at least none that are probably watching this podcast. So at least there's that. So, going along with all of that, did any of you have any particular, like, idols that you wanted to, like, aim to be like when you first, um, I don't know, when you first started getting into the game? Isaiah. Isaiah, right <laughs> off the bat. That's what, got, that's what got me into it. I played Captain Falcon those first few years. Really? Mm-hmm. When was that? That was, like, 
That was my high school day, so 06 to 09 probably. Now, my late, late high school, early college. I graduated in 07, so. Now, so first did that at all have to do with your tag being the Manalord? Because I actually also wanted to go into why you guys have these tags. Mm. That tag, this tag lived before that. I got it on AIM because the game Secret of Mana was my favorite game. Ooh. And I just came up with something related to that. Okay. Because I was going to say the Mana Lord, Captain Falcon, there might be some relations. And then I thought more and I was like, wait, no, Zelda would have more relations than that. But <laughs> more magic, more magic. Exactly. Ball, right? Exactly. Got to get them arpages. Yeah. So, so Isaiah was my idol guy. I don't know about these guys. Hmm. Jake? I didn't really... Uh, go ahead, Jake. Yeah, I looked up to Isaiah from the dock. Is I, he was probably my favorite like person in the dock that was involved. Mm. Um, my inspiration was mainly M2K in terms of top players. I don't think I have to go into detail about that. He was, at that time, like three years ago, he was probably the best Sheik, you know? Right. Plup wasn't optimized yet. He was still a Samus. Um, in terms of local, Mana and Decidetech, obviously, they were my... Um, my idols for the region, Mana's um, decisiveness and organization when it comes to running like big events like these and like holding like holding upstate down as a region, especially with Syracuse being like the center mm -hmm. of upstate. And then Josiah with is like even back then when I like was getting twenty fifth at biweeklies, he was still like messaging me first, giving advice and like saying like you know just giving me the boost of confidence that I needed back then. Daddy Mana. Happy to hear that. <laughs> Grandfather of the entire upstate scene. Honestly. Yeah, I've never I I never really had a favorite player. My favorite player was Kirby Kaze for some unknown reason. Just like, right off the gate. Yeah, just right off the bat. I like a couple of random tournaments that I watched, I saw him place like top eight, top sixteen, and I thought he played Sheik in a pretty cool way. Hmm. I mean, yeah, he was the he was the different breed of Sheik back in that day. You were either in, like very inspired from Kirby Kaze style, or you were you just were a diehard MTK fan. That's yeah, not... well, because I and mean, I what was... other big Sheiks really were there? Uh, at that point, Tech Zero. Who? Tech Zero was the old school Sheik back in the day. Mm hmm. Hmm. Oh, uh, Lucian, Lucian. He was also um. Very popular one. Right. Not sure if he was West Coast or East Coast, but yeah, he was definitely placing well even back then. Hmm. Yeah, there was, it was slim pickings for Sheik players. So you had to pick either M2K or Kaze and pick your side and hold on What's to it. about PM, Malcolm? Who's your favorite PM guy? That's true. I don't even That's know true. if I really have a favorite. Like, all the PM people I like, I just like because I like hanging out with them. Like, I love Thunders because he's just the weirdest little anime hentai Hentai kid in the world. legend. Yep. <laughs> but Happy birthday. Like, hentai. <laughs> oh, yeah, literally hentai. the nicest dude I've ever met. Um, and it's been really cool, like, seeing his progression where uh, people view New Fish, which we flew him out to, as, like, his breakout tournament. And then he went on to become, like, the best player in the game definitively. New um, Fish was his breakout? He had a good tournament on the West Coast, um, uh, Final Boss, which was in Oakland uh, Regional, mm -hmm. and he took second at that, um, and he's from Oakland. Yes. Um, then two weeks later, he went out to Supernova, and he took like 33rd, which was a PM National. So everyone just sort of wrote it off as like, oh, he fluked out, like he only did well because he was in his backyard. Um, and then he came out to New Fish and he beat Flip, who was at that point the number one player in the world. Um, he beat Ally, who was still playing a ton of PM and was really good. And I think he did it like only dropping like three games the entire day. And then he just went on a streak of like winning every tournament for six months. Holy shit. Yeah, and New Fish was a like, great major for, I mean, I consider a major for PM considering how many top players came out, right? Yeah, it was it was cool um, seeing it as one of the like major tournaments that were listed uh, for uh, PM's version of like MIOM Top 100, where a bunch of people that are like, oh, he did this well at Newfish, like that was their justification for like ranking allies. Like he took third at Newfish and beat X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. That's um, nice. But PM's really big in the Northeast, and people travel uh, all throughout New England and New York City. And, 
uh, CT, whether you want to consider that New England or not. Right. Well, the whole the whole area over there for the most part. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, so that's pretty cool, and that can actually lead us into the next topic of discussion, which is mostly going to focus on Mandalorian and Airwave. Uh, the whole idea of TOing at a local and regional level. I know both of you have a lot of experience within that. Jake, I I'm gonna assume you don't, but I mean, if you do, feel free to like chime into any of this. Um, I guess my main question for all you guys is basically like, how do you go about mixing your play, your practice and your TOing, not only during an actual tournament that you're running, but even like setting up for it? Because I know you all play as much as you TO and prep and all that stuff, you know? Can I kick this one off Airwave? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so is it so the whole tournament thing for me, so... You know, I started as a player, obviously, but the first tournament I ever hosted was also, it was in 07 when I was first starting, and it was my parents' house, mm -hmm. and it was 16 people, surprisingly. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> and, you know, the reason I hosted it is because I wanted a tournament to play in. And, you know, 10 years later or whatever, that same thing happened when I moved to Syracuse. Mm -hmm. I wanted a tournament to play in. There wasn't one. So I hosted it, and that was like three or four years ago now. We just had our 50th bi-weekly celebration so you know thanks to all the players for coming out for these things but it, it started as me as a player so i had to learn the to stuff while grueling through bracket like mm -hmm. every single event and you know sometimes the stress got to me but i think just like practicing for the game it was practice that made perfect for me you know i didn't go in with the biggest plan of oh i'm gonna be the biggest to the best to or whatever right it, i'm hosting these and i'm gonna kick the asses of everybody that shows up that was my mindset at the time you know <laughs> but once once i got bigger i saw how much people appreciated them i did try and scale back you know put more of my time and energy into that to aspect mm -hmm. and it, it, it did just mold together you know like i said practice makes perfect just doing it enough times you see the you see the routine you try to improve every time don't keep it the same and that that's where i that's how i got to where i'm at today it's just by doing it because i wanted to play mm -hmm. That's actually that's such a that's such a way that I haven't actually never even thought of it. I never saw it as, oh, I just I wanted to be able to play. It it was more or less like, oh, I want to bring people together and yeah, I want to play. Not not so much. I've actually never heard that. I actually really like that one. That's sick. Yeah. So Malcolm, if you have anything you'd like to add, and thanks for the forty bits. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so I I started actually um, toing only because uh, when Smash Four came out, Pastime Legends, who is the only place that really did tournaments around here, uh, they dropped Project M. Um, what they were doing is they do. PM singles and melee doubles, and then the next week they do melee singles, PM doubles. Um, and then once Smash 4 came out, they dropped PM to host Smash 4. So at that point, I was more a Project M player than a melee player. Um, I was still actively playing both. Uh, but uh, my roommates and I decided that we wanted to be able to have a PM weekly, and we didn't want the game to die. Um, and we went to our card shop, which uh, just opened a new location, said, hey, can we host Project M? We got a date, we started doing weeklies. Um, we, I think our first one, we had like six people, with two of them being Hungry Pigeon and Xanda, and the rest yeah. of them being my roommates. Um, over time, we we're actually able to, we topped out like low 30s for PM weeklies, which was pretty sick. Um, and it, it's been an up and down experience. Um, from there, I got involved hosting some of the new fit, or I, uh, the RPI tournaments, uh, hosting some stuff at NLG, the NLSS Smash Series. Uh, and RIP next level. RIP. <laughs> RIP Next Level. Um, also, the Smash and Series, which to this day oh. is my favorite tournament series of all time. I was so uh, sad I never got to be a part of those. That hurts. What was that one? Uh, the Smash and Series is a series um, of food-based events. Uh, the biggest one is Smash and Turkey, which we host a week or two before Thanksgiving. And I cook like a Thanksgiving dinner for 30 to 40 people uh, for all the kids who I uh, want to enjoy Thanksgiving with their Smash family uh, before they head back to see their actual families. 
um, where that's usually, it involves a lot of drinking, a lot of food, um, a lot of side events. Uh, super good fun times. I, I love the Smash End events. Shout outs to Smash and Nuggets. That was my first like actual invited to tournament. That was amazing. I miss that. Is that the one that Billy hosted and then left before it finished? He left to go get the nuggets that he didn't finish ordering and then got told it would take like a half hour to make the nuggets. And so I just took my money back when I didn't make it out of the pool and left. Hilarious. But yeah, I'm pretty sure he also left or something. It was it was funny as hell, but it was a fun event too. So yeah, but okay, I understand these these are kind of like two different ways of looking at how uh, how TOing got involved in your ways. But with this being said, I do want to talk more. I I see with Mana's I, or uh, Mana's way, it seems you were able to mix in your practice with your TOing since that's that's kind of the big reason that you got into TOing oh, yeah. was so yep. you could practice. Right. Yep. So and with me as well, I. I'm lucky nowadays that I grinded tech, you know, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I don't necessarily have to practice as much as some people do um, for, for various things. So on my own free time, really the only times I practice are at tournaments when I'm fighting people or when I have Smash Fests. You know, no personal training goes into it. Cause I'm 28 now, I got a lot of things going on. Right. The tournaments too. So luckily my practice was a little front loaded and I was able to play in TO at the same time instead of having to learn and go through that whole grind and adventure as well right. luckily i had done that piece already so basically it just kind of comes down to the fact that since you get these tournaments all set anyway you might as well just get your practice in while you're there which is good yeah. too i mean you still see improvement and stuff like that anyway as, well what i imagine oh yeah yep I, hey i can shield drop now i couldn't do that a year hey. ago <laughs> And so, Malcolm, your your thing, as far as, because clearly I'm from the same region as where a Airwave is, and what I've seen is a little more of, at least with you, it seems it's more of a, I'm just going to play if I feel like it, and not really take it too seriously, and just kind of have fun with it. And I think that's a great mentality with it, but is that how you want to stay doing it, or do you see yourself eventually being like, I'm done playing this game, I'm only going to be a solid TO, or flip that and you're going to stop TOing and maybe start focusing more only on the game? Um, so there was a time period, probably about like a year and a half ago, two years ago, where I was definitely trying to make a name for myself in the game. Um, I was getting a couple good out of region wins. Um, I was getting like seated as like a three seed in at nationals uh, for pools. Whereas, like, yeah, he's a guy, he might cause an upset, he's a decent player, uh, he's from a small region, blah, blah, blah. Um, and eventually, it just... I'm at the point now where, like, uh, I spend, like, 40 to 50 hours a week working. Um, I'm trying to run tournaments, I'm trying to play a little bit. Uh, my girlfriend lives in North Jersey, so she's, like, three hours away. So it's, it's all these competing interests, and as more and more interests have come into play, Mm -hmm. uh smash has started to take a backseat yeah so it's a lot healthier for me to just uh be like this is a fun thing i'm gonna come i'll run a bracket or two i'll maybe play a couple friendlies try to get some of the new guys who are just uh at their first or second tournament or maybe a little younger maybe shy get them to try to come out of their shell a little bit get them involved with people but my time as a player is definitely uh quickly quickly dissipating Gotcha. And and it's understandable, too. I mean, you can only do this for so long before, you know, you, you got you to gotta let the real world set in, too. Not like Smash isn't, but if you're not pro, if you're not MIOM, it's really hard to just only play this game once you're in your, like, mid-20s, especially. You got to you gotta get that job. It's kind of hard yeah. to be supported on it. But it's always good and to keep it in your life. I'm sorry. You go ahead. Uh, the other thing I was going to say, just, you know, as people get older, uh, most of my friends that I played Smash with no longer play Smash. So oh, it's like, oh, do I want to play Smash with, like, these guys that I've met locally? Or do I want to play, uh, you know, PUBG or CSGO or go, like, hang out and play Magic with some people that, uh, like, I, I, I've known for a little bit longer. You don't play CSGO. So, don't lie to me. I was just putting it as an example. It hurts. I wasn't sorry. I, 
wouldn't put it past Malcolm to play various other random games in his free time. Very true. Very true. I was playing the Dota, shit I think, out of this. Madden. Oh, Madden? Probably, yo, the new Madden's so good. Oh my god. Alright, that, that's a sidetrack. <laughs> I don't understand sports games anyway. But, alright, um, then, yeah, that's that's fair. And then, Jake, did you actually have any TOing experience at all or stuff like that you would want to pitch in on? Um, I have enough experience to say that I've hosted <laughs> two tournaments at my house hey. with bare minimum of uh, 12 people at most. <laughs> Okay. Similar, similar to Mana's uh, house experience. But other than that, no. But I think this year and the upcoming years when I start like getting into to college and I have more free time, um, I'm going to start go- looking around the area and start finding um, venues that I can host tournaments in. And actually, there's a, a venue right down the street from my house that I could use to encourage them into lending that space for us. That'd be sick. But, yeah. Because it's something that Bing has always needed. Um, I know the Binghamton University kids have tried last year. You know, we've got a, we got we've made some pretty good turnouts for um, for um, BU last year in mm-hmm. terms of you know actual money tournaments. But yeah, I think uh, this year until um, next summer, it's gonna I'm gonna make a conscious effort to build up my scene via TOing. Or at least helping out in some way, because I'm always trying to seek some um, alternative method to help people out. Of course. Because, like, everyone's still hard together at BU. I don't think people realize that because no one ever comes down here. Yeah. But everyone's so tight-knit in that group, in the BU Smash group. Well, and that can even bring up a question for these two guys. Like, what advice would you guys offer even to just JMOOC in terms of getting together to start hosting your own tournaments and being a tournament organizer? Uh, always be on time. Like I, I know like that, that sounds like such a basic thing. It's so underrated. I showed up to there, always be early. Always be early. Um, and like be set up. Cause the worst tournaments for me are ones where I show up. Like let's say the tournament's supposed to start at seven, and I show up at like six thirty, and there's nothing set up. There's no friendly setups. Like I don't know who the TO is. And once that happens, unless it's like the best players I've ever played with, it's I, I'm just so turned off already that I just hate it. Yeah, I can see that putting stress on you in the long run. One thing. I think, I, oops, oh, sorry. Oh, I was can just. I, yeah, yeah. Just, go, go. Jake, Jake, with the Binghamton scene in particular, from what I've seen, I think they're very dependent on the college right now. But like Jake was just saying, if he was able to get a venue outside of that where they could host some things, I think that's what will bring the people from outside of Bing in. Mm -hmm. Like the college is on fire. They do great. But they consistently only host free events. But I know they've dabbled. Like I've gone down for some of their paid events. It was good. Lots of big turnout still. Good talent. Um, Just remove a little dependency from the college. And I think Binghamton is good to go. Definitely. Yeah. The thing about the um, View Smash right now is that they don't have a storage room to put all their equipment, so everything oh. that's the venue has to be brought, you know, via carrying it. Into time. Yeah, so I'm trying to find some place where we can, get, like, have a place that we can lock down and, like, have a storage room where we can put, like, <laughs> TVs and various other stuff. Definitely. Now, that would be yeah. really good for you guys, too, especially. I've, I've just seen how helpful that can be with mm-hmm. us over in in uh, Albany, or not Albany, Troy, getting the, the blast zone up and running. It's so much easier to just have your place, like, set up, have an area where you can just keep the setups. People don't have to keep hauling them in and out, in and out. And it just, it definitely is a lot more of a stress reliever than a stress causer being like, we need setups, we need setups, we need a place. Yeah, the hallway of CRT. That, that hallway of CRTs in the blast zone is, like, the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It does feel great. I, I do love that All place. Just- but um, the one other thing I was even going to add was something uh, a professor in my college my freshman year told me, like, I think one of the very first classes I took was like, and this was just about showing up to his class. He's like, if you show up 15 minutes early, you're on time. If you show up on time, you're late. And if you're late, don't bother even knocking on the door. And, I love it. And I think you can, like, take that into almost anything in life that is that 
involves you in a sense of um, not even leadership, but yeah, yeah, preparation. Like you're involved in some way. I think if you're if you are heavily involved, almost an hour early and you're on time. Yeah. Like you, it's all it's all about timing. I think I think timing is so underrated. I think it's a big deal, <laughs> and and I would definitely recommend that ever. Shout outs to Quatroche, Professor Quatroche, my favorite professor I've had all all college all of my college life so yeah those are yeah. some pretty good tips any other ones you guys want to suggest anything else it's all good if not um i just wanted to comment i know um last time i was up in pews mana and the rest of the people who decided to help out help out we um we set up the venue the night before which i think oh yeah yeah looking looking back on it, i think that's probably um what i'm gonna do if I'm able to, of course, if I'm able to, to get into the venue the night before. But yeah, I think that's the, the one that puts the least amount of stress on you just to walk into the venue and have everything set up. Now all, all you have to do is register people. That's definitely another good one. Definitely having yep, it yep. set even the night before, 100%. That's something I learned from doing them too, because sometimes you get in there that morning and something would go wrong or who knows. So yep. another thing I learned by trial and error. Oh, the internet's mm -hmm. down. Our stream overlay is messed up. Oh, what are the Wii's are it turning down. on? Oh, <laughs> God. Hard Reads is... 1 was one of my most... Uh, I was so stressed out for that. But that's another story. That's That's exactly some great tips to offer up to everyone. And I hope everyone takes those into their own hands. So... As far as our TOs in this chat right now go, if you guys would like to plug some events, we're going to start with uh, Malcolm, just because I know he's going to have to be going soon, and I know a very special one he wants to plug is one I'm going to put up on the screen right now, CGC. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> all right. so CGC is our upcoming uh, Melee PM Regional at Proctor's Theater in uh, Schenectady, New York. It's going to be happening on October 7th. Uh, so the coolest thing about there's a couple of really cool things about CGC. Uh, one, top eight for both games is going to be happening on a five-story tall movie screen. Uh, it's the largest movie screen in the entire Northeast. Uh, we're also going to have over 50 setups for the event, which I think, like, to me, that's that that's what I look for in a tournament. I want a bunch of setups. Oh, yeah. Um, so this has been... In, interesting experience trying to put together um just because we're sharing the date with big house and i know that's made it where i uh, it's made it easier for me as the pm or as like a pm guy because it's like oh pm every like it's right there i don't have to worry about anything like pm's not really gonna be a big house but all the melee guys are freaking out because it's uh, not able to really find the... Uh... Speak on that part real quick? Yeah. Last year, uh, I think it was Houston Beatdown 5 competed with uh, the Big House. I saw no impact in attendance uh, from what I expected, save the dozen or so people that, of course, went to Big House that I knew. But otherwise, you know, I, I think people are going to bite onto your tournament a little... Uh, later because, you know, Big House gets more expensive as it gets close and somebody looking for an alternative, boom, CDC right there. I agree with you. I think that uh, I think that once it gets a little closer to the event, that a bunch of Melee heads are going to be like, eh, I'm actually not going to make that trip to Big House. Yep. yep. That sounds They'll make right. the trip out to the... But I, I just know Billy, shout outs to Billy McTagg, <laughs> freaking out cons pretty consistently. <laughs> Malcolm, what are we gonna do? <laughs> Don't send that energy into the universe. Don't send that energy out there. I'm with you. I'm just like, let's just have fun. Even yep. if people go to Big House, let's just make it the best tournament we can. Hell yeah. That's what I like to hear. Just to that Billy. Billy has always been the stressful mother of CR. <laughs> yep. Never felt a Billy's a Billy is definitely the stressed mom. I love it. And actually, um, Malcolm, if you want to actually send me the link to like where people can find out information about that, I would love to. That's going to be another one of those links, guys. Check them out in the description. There's going to yeah, be two streams, I think, going on, as I talked to him about beforehand for PM. Hitbox.tv slash next level smash. That's yep, what it was. Next level smash. And then for the melee stream when that goes on, twitch.tv slash pastime legends. 
So yeah, that's a, it's actually shaping up to look like a really strong PM event. Um, we currently have three top 50 players confirmed. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if that ends up, uh, I would say probably close to five or six top 50 players and a handful of top 100 players, uh, going on to that. Unless you want to keep those hidden, you're welcome to name drop them if you'd even like. Uh, so we got Morks. He's the top player in all of Canada. We have Fresh. Uh, he's a top 10 player uh, nationally. He's uh, probably like a top three or four player in New York City right now. Uh, best PM ICs player. Um, we have uh, Flip, who's the best snake in the world. Best we have Tice, yep. who's the best Charizard. Twisty, who uh, is soft confirm. He's the second best Wario player in the world uh, and the number one player in New England. He's taken, uh, he took second this past weekend at Shine. He took third at Super Smash Con. Um, uh, King Coney, second best DK player in the world. Um, bunch of really, really strong regional names. Nice. Damn, I actually had no idea. I want to try and actually look at the um, the Facebook, or not the Facebook, the Smash GG thing beforehand to see the everything's names hidden. and everything's hidden. I was like, damn everything's it. Everything's hidden. Yeah. You gotta come to me if you want names. I was busy. I was busy. But I like it. No, those are some great names. Guys, again, make sure you check those out. And we got Mask Metalord JMO. No big deal. I was just going to comment on that real quick. I want to come out, but when does the venue go up next? Because I'm going to sign up before that happens. Ooh, venue yes. goes up uh, for the first time on September 1st. Okay. Um, you can choose to pay at the door. So if you just want to get those savings, you can do it right now. Okay. Um, after that, uh, so venue goes up to $20 on September 1st, and then I think October 1st, it goes up to 25. So it, anyone who's listening, anyone who wants to sign up, do that now. It just, you don't even have to pay right now. Just click the buttons and save some money. Oh, you don't have to pay ahead of time, even if you pre-reg? Nope. You can pay right. it even if you pre-reg. I will, uh, thank you for that information. Let's get it. <laughs> All right. And then moving on to the next TO who wants to plug his things, I'm going to actually... The thing. banner there? Yeah, it's got your bi-weeklies and the special events thing. Fantastic. Well, yeah, so that's essentially just what I'm going to shout out. Anybody who wants to know about Syracuse stuff, easiest thing to do is get on Syracuse Smash Facebook. Everything is right there, thrown right in your face. It's on the banner. It's in the pinned post. I'm talking about it all the time. But <laughs> just for me to talk about that a little bit more, <laughs> September 23rd at the SRC Arena, a brand new convention center on OCC campus. Um, is the Syracuse Comic-Con Championships. Now, this is a Saturday event at a Comic-Con, so you can do all sorts of other fun stuff on top of Smash. We got 64 p.m. Melee Wii U. That's the Syracuse Smash special, doing all four. I love it. And a $200 pop bonus on that one. Once again, September 23rd, get more information on the Facebook page, Syracuse Smash. The one that I really want to talk about, however, the biggest one every year, our largest annual tournament, Houston Beatdown at Retro Game Con. 2017 november 18th saturday can i yeah. get some air horn sound effects syracuse new york <laughs> 500 dollar pot bonus and 64 p.m melee wii u names that have been around in the past we had dj nintendo we had Diz kid boogie you know who else have i played out here in central new york let me think i've played i've played kage out here before i've played Raynex. i've played mewtwo king out here we get names coming through central new york sometimes and no doubt about it they're going to be here this time so be on that facebook page syracuse smash and you'll hear all about it as that information comes out oh i just tried uh, to play this air horn sound effect and of course i have everything <laughs> god damn it that was so awkward it just went so Bang, 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 bang. Bang. <laughs> I like it. So yeah, guys, make sure you check out all of these great events. I know we're only just getting into the podcast, but we might as well get some of these things, some of these things plugged on early. Again, all the links to these will be available in the description of the YouTube VOD slash the YouTube audio VOD. I don't know what the hell it is. Someone needs to teach me how to upload this stuff to like iTunes podcasts or something. I don't know. But as I'm speaking, we got our fourth guest joining us in here right now. If Patches wants to step up to the plate, say hello to the world. How you doing, buddy? Hello, gang. I'm, uh, I'm doing pretty good, thanks. I'm over here at Jay Mook's house. Nice. Because it's really close to where I work. Did you wear your Akatsuki shirt? No. Damn it. I almost wore 
Yeah, because I came from work. But I <laughs> I did. I wore a Kotsky sweatshirt today. All it's right. Very good. Piece. Let's get it. Let's get it. So if you want to give an introduction of yourself to the new player or to the people that are in here, everyone else has already said their hellos, but welcoming in our new guy patches. Um, hmm, I'm not really a notable TO, although I do run <laughs> tournaments in Endicott, so, but they're very tiny usually. And, uh, so I don't have that. I don't have the JMOOC level, level uh, skill. Oh, he's but, got uh, plenty. The handsomest ice climber made in upstate, so I guess that's why I was on the show. Also, the only one. Also, the well, Jake, shut up, bro. I'm the handsomest. <laughs> one, okay? No, you're you're not. Uh, so, you're not a dual main. I'm pretty sure I saw you going peach. Uh, why don't you never say that to me again? Damn. Man, dual, Damn. I'm the ice climbers, and I take great offense to people saying I'm a dual main. <laughs> peach is the stupidest character in the game. All right, we'll take we'll take those shots and mix them with a little salt. So, <laughs> so let's see here. Where can we jump on in now that you are here? We can talk about. Let's talk about the regions. Uh, all of us kind of not too much spread. I mean, mana and patches and J move. You guys are more close together, I would say, than like myself and where I am with uh, even Airwave since I'm yeah. from Cap Region. But if you guys want to even talk a little bit about how you feel your regions are as a whole, you might have some unknown players hidden in the shadows. How do you feel? Just overall, how do you feel about your regions? Uh, mm. Anyone can really take that and run with it. I'd say let's give it a patches and JMOOC first. Um, so Binghamton actually kind of, because we've got Craze, and Craze is always good, and nobody knows about Craze because you don't know the shit or anything. Uh, so we've always had craze, but this year we've actually got Skipper and Bananas coming back to BU, who have been making waves in the Long Island scene. Skipper getting a few good wins this summer over people like Dr. Lobster, who are just, you know, like pretty good players, but not not like super good in Long Island, like not Animal or Cody, but like pretty good. He's in right. players that they um, provide good competition up here. Yeah, of course. Um, like he, and he, so I'm interested to see how he does it, like, events like that retro game con and mm -hmm. you know the other one that we were saying uh the other convention <laughs> there that Eric was talking about i don't remember the name of it but Seriously. like things like that i think those two are really gonna do a lot better than people expect them to just because people don't know like skipper beat mask at uh jalapeno that doesn't get talked about ever mm -hmm. but like it's really good mm -hmm. so that's yeah. about it really for our melee at least um not even yeah. gonna say that kid J Mook on the rise. Not even gonna talk about <laughs> him. I didn't even to talk about us. Uh, obviously, we're the two best in England. Also, oh. Girly. Yeah, we. No is one still really, here. No one talks about Girly. Yes, Girly is still here. Oh, okay, never yeah. mind. I need to talk about Chris then, because Chris would destroy uh, bananas and Skipper. Still, Chris is a god. Ooh. Chris is, takes game off. Takes games off J Mook. Uh, good <laughs> like chris is so good he's a peach main mm. uh from you i don't he just doesn't go to anything i don't know why I'm no not really... he, he doesn't have that competitive spirit but like when he plays or he's when so <laughs> when you play him you know he's just like, <laughs> he's an adapter he just knows exactly how to move around your own your own stuff right yeah he's like as good or better than me at least and nobody knows about him. Yeah. But. Hmm. Which which will be our goal for um this year is just to, uh, you know, collide with BU and like bring some of their like best players with us to you know Syracuse Comic Con, Retro Game Con, you know. So we're gonna have to make more carpool trips up there because right. no one people sleep on Bing besides like you know us two obviously. But you know, there's a lot of like hidden bosses that people don't know about. Yeah, people just do not know. Like Craze and Vid as a team. With, Vid doesn't even know how to like wave dash, and him and he can't. Yeah, he's a peach. You can't float cancel, but yeah, like he can't float cancel either. But they like who they beat. They beat Nick and Flacco that one time. They beat. They have better ones though. I just can't think of them. Yeah. They're just so good in teams. It's crazy. Also, um, Craze notoriously beat Jank at one of the events. Oh, and it was his first time ever playing a puff too. Yes, for sure. He's a mark. Any, any good puff. Damn. <laughs> It was so good. <laughs> it was 2-0, too, by the way. Oh, man. Damn. So, okay. So, we got some 
be you hidden bosses. Mana, you got any yeah. you want to plug in there? Um, you know, I've seen a lot of new faces in Syracuse, uh, kind of towards the lower end of the card, in the middle of the, the middle of the card mm -hmm. in our tournament scene. I haven't seen anybody new kind of really challenge uh, the guys at the top who come around usually, but I can really expect that to change with all the students coming in. Mm -hmm. I think for the first time in a while, Syracuse is getting a lot more players at the college who are good. Uh, for the first couple of years I was here, it was no college scene really. It's, it was all locally built, people here year round. But this year, you know, we guys we got guys like Noogie Rap, um, Onion Knight coming back into the into the mix. Some good guys in Central New York who who play elsewhere when they're not here for school. So they're they've been getting battle hardened. Now they're coming back. You know, they're going to be facing you know like myself, Jake and Max and brackets. So it, it's going to be a good clash. I'm excited to see what happens. Mm. Uh, but as of right now, we kind of have a status quo around here. So we need somebody to mix it up. Well, with that being yeah. said, actually, it was I'm not going to lie. It was actually kind of hard trying to even find some form of PR for, like, the Syracuse region. So who actually is your top five, would you say, in Syracuse? What we do, uh, I've lumped Oswego, which has, you know, Onion Knight. Now now it's going to have Mega X, um, Judge. Oswego has a few players. That's about 40 minutes north of Syracuse. And also I lumped Binghamton into central New York, which is, you know, if you just drive straight, it's like 45 minutes, so it's also not that bad. Hmm. Uh, in our PR... What it looked like is, you know, Jake, myself, um, and then we had Chess and Poonslayer in the region, but now they're both permanently gone. So I'm going to exclude those guys. Um, besides Jake and myself, we have Patches and, and Goodle Shoes. And then, um, I, you know, just to, to put a fifth person there to round it out, I just got to shout out Syracuse Nick, holding it down with so many characters oh, and so many people. <laughs> he plays a lot so, of different people? Or, he... Yeah, just, yeah, a lot of characters, and he's online all the time. He's on Netplay, big name on there. Um, so so he, he's got some XP. He's good. But that was yeah. for the quiet summer. So we're going to have a whole different season coming up here soon. Nice. <laughs> yeah, my, uh, my name's about to drop a few spots. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dude, it's all about that climb. Got to go back down. <laughs> All right, and then moving on to even Malcolm, if you have names from the CR that you would like to even mention, because I know I don't get to talk about them nearly enough, but I know you'll get to. So I think CR is going to be pretty cool this year. Uh, we got Lumble, who's moving up here from downstate. He's a Luigi player who I know was like borderline top 20 um, in New York City. Um for the past couple seasons. Obviously, we got you saying coming back, uh, Puff God. Yep. Um, in terms of young guys, I think like that Rose Slurp um, RC trifecta of like 15, 16 year old high school kids. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see them uh, take a couple steps up in the near future. Definitely. Um, who else do we have? Who else is interesting right now? I think Pig is starting to make himself even oh, more Pig known. Is, Pig is going crazy. I think Pig is like, Pig is leveled up like eight levels. Honestly. Um, like what tournament? Uh, it was the Syracuse he recently took second at, right? Mm -hmm. I think yeah. so, yeah, because I saw a bunch of people posting like, oh, he janked his way in. But at the same time, like, come on. He yeah, uh, Pig is lit. I no. think the practice he's been getting in Capital Region has been very valuable. You know, Seabass, that's a good fox. I played him recently. He's getting Puff Ditto practice, and he's got that Sheik practice with Spike. I think you guys have been training him up. Yeah. I think Honestly, I think it can't be, like, I uh, stated enough, like, how useful it is to have someone like Toussaint in the region for someone like Pig. Mm -hmm. Because he went from being the only Puff player to, like, having arguably, like, the third best puff player in the world i uh, like to play with Definitely. like that's huge yeah and then not even sleeping on some of the other players that we got out there having bills out there gso having some other solid names that just have been around for a while just continue oh, to side practice gso's old and washed up <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> feels bad man damn <laughs> But I mean, I mean, I definitely agree with what Mana was saying. I think our, I think CR as a region is actually starting to open up a lot more. People are starting to play smarter. They're not 
Because I think we started as a lot of documentary kids, if I'm being honest. I feel the CR was definitely full of them for a while, and then it was people, documentary people wanted to get Santa good. and Hungry Pigeons. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then people wanted to get better, and they were kind of tired of just getting beat by the same people. And I definitely, I, I hope that we're we're given more practice and we start taking names ourselves. Also, want to be that guy to publicly say that Code Man is definitely the best Pichu. I don't know what what PR thing I saw or whatever it was where it was a person's name in every single, uh, in oh, every that, single what, character that, slot. That thing that put M2K in there. Meanwhile, he had like a bunch of other names anyway. No, Code Man definitely best Pichu. End of story. Wow, the list. That list is inaccurate because Mana's name wasn't over. Yeah, the there was also Mana. <laughs> yeah. However, I saw one where Mana was over. So. They did change the description to update it, and my name was included at that point. There so we go. Not too mad okay. about it. I don't think Cody's was though, and that that strikes me the wrong way. Cody, you deserve that spot. You're the best Pichu in my heart. <laughs> you know what? It's only because MDK brings out his Pichu for like round one pulls, and that's the only. If, if he didn't do that, then Koman would. He has enough Pichu. characters though that he's good with. Cody deserves that one. <laughs> he, he literally yeah. only plays Pichu. Come on, did you? I don't know if you've ever even seen it. There's the set between uh, M2K and uh, shit. Who is it? Who's that? King Momo, and like M King Momo's like down 2-0 or whatever. And I think they're about to go to FD, and M2K switches to Pichu, and then Momo switches to Pichu, and they Pichu did it on FD. Oh it's god, actually one of the best, like games i've ever seen and by best i mean saddest that's tough it's rough it is really rough first time i played code man i didn't know how good he was and i picho pichu dittoed him on fd oh god i won one stock at like 100 percent. that was so close <laughs> he's crazy dude shout outs my man oh and he's in the chat what's up cody love you man so let's see where were we on this we're talking about the regions how about traveling as far as your region goes with traveling. Jmook especially, I was gonna ask you, why does it feel as if like I never see you traveling all that much? Um we know exactly why. Yeah, it's <laughs> mostly all um parenting and oh, yeah. <laughs> allow seventeen year old to travel <laughs> with all these people and stay in hotels for a couple nights, you know, yeah. and and suspect that there's not anything going on. Um, so much going on. <laughs> may or may not be the case. Gotcha. I gotcha. Man. So that's just the point. <laughs> well, because you always hear those stories of the people that can't explain it to their parents that this like is a big thing for them and that they want to see them I succeed know, in it's it. So hard. Yeah. Oh, I don't doubt you. I don't doubt you. Yeah. Oh yeah. So a Smash will always be considered that hobby that I have, you know, every now and then that I travel to. Yeah. But I think with it, when I go to college next year, my freedom will. I'll begin to travel to more stuff, especially with me being able to drive pretty soon. Mm. That will also help too. But other than that, Max and I will we're gonna make an effort to actually travel to stuff more. You know, go down to the city for nebs or in Long Island tournaments. Yeah, that's definitely the plan for like school breaks and stuff. Right now, um, I think I'm just gonna take a little break. Millie's not feeling super fun right now. I don't know why, so I'm just taking like a little break of like a few weeks or maybe a month on the outside uh but i'm still gonna take jake's to stuff and maybe do doubles so he's still gonna get to travel and everything because i'm like literally his only ride usually right uh so we're gonna try and make that work then after that uh we're gonna really make an effort and buckle down to trying to get to like all these different high level you know tournaments right. and stuff like yeah. he said like nebs and things like that and of course because i mean i think know. people are gonna start to expect especially from and i don't mean to be like specific but especially from jmook i mean just watching at ssc <laughs> seeing him go up against mac d and making it a 2-1 oh. set like that was we don't talk about that. last stock uh, last hit they hit him with a strong bear at 140 and somehow he didn't die <laughs> this is the most fucking bullshit or the regular bull crap set <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Yeah, no, but I I feel for that though. But that's that's what I'm saying though. I've always I definitely knew when I heard that you were going to uh, SSC that I was like, this is gonna be a kid I want to watch for. I want to see what he's gonna do. 
Um, more or less because I also, like, it was kind of you and my friend Matt, a.k.a. Wild. Shout out to him. I knew both of you guys you were going. Love Matt. Oh, you guys know? Oh, let's go. Everyone loves Matt. He's such a great dude. Oh, my God. Nick Play is our boy. <laughs> Shout, out to Shout out to him if he's in the chat. Boy. Uh, he's probably asleep right now or at a tournament. One of two things. Actually, there's like various <laughs> other things he's doing. But anyway, <laughs> but like I definitely knew you both were going and I know both of you have been like progressing at such a rate that I was like, I need to watch how these guys do. And then seeing you have to play MACD, he had to play Lethen. I was like, oh my God, these are my boys right now. Let's Oops. go. Playing these top level players that I've been watching taking like top eights, top 32s and... I don't know. That's Yo, that's a big reason I want to see you guys in there. Another thing that cool that happened at Super Smash Con was um, uh, day three, I think three, maybe four. I don't know. The last day, the top eight day, uh, Mewtwo King and Plump, they put because Mewtwo King and stayed in our in me and Jake's room the night before. That's a long story <laughs> because it's just too long, and. Uh, then we took him to the venue, and um, him and Pluck warmed up with me and Jake for like an hour and a half or two hours right before they played QFAT the first time. Oh god! And then they beat him, and we played Marth Fox against them, and we did not we did not do terribly well. It was, <laughs> it was <an> <laughs> yeah, it was really like an interesting experience to see how you know we think you know sometimes me and Jake think we're the shit, but <laughs> like playing that we felt absolutely helpless one hundred percent of the time. It was an eye opener. Just picture like the amount of helplessness you feel in singles against like H Box or Mewtwo King, and transfer it over to doubles where you have oh, two people oh, hitting no. you back and forth. It's even worse until you're it's in like bullied. crazy. I didn't. Oh, I didn't now know. Now he will try. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. And then we played them for mad long. When they beat Pew Fat, thanks to us, obviously. <laughs> Shut up. And during <laughs> that, uh, Mewtwo King, he was having some like issues with his controller mm. and so i stiff for him and he said well first he said he couldn't needle cancel anymore and i thought i'd ruined his whole tournament and i was oh, gonna be no. like out on social media and like shout <laughs> out to this kid patches <laughs> breaking my fucking controller what a dick asshole kid in new york but then I you said already, it. you already have jeffy as it is yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, Jake just fired some hard shots. Anyway, we're gonna try and get back to the story. Um, but uh, yeah. Then he said he just had to get used to it, and like then it was fine. So I thought that was cool that I got to do that for a top player. Cause that's kind of one thing I'm good at. Like you know, I'm not a super good player, and I'm not a you're a controller modder. Yo, know, I I'm really good with controllers and stuff. So that was another good thing that happened from Smash Con. Awesome. And then it was most. You know, no, <laughs> you I know. got you. Definitely. Mac D is the notable one. Yo, just money match him. Next tournament you go to, if he's there, just money match him, dude. Get that on stream. <laughs> best of five. No best of three crap. But um, even yeah. Mana Lord, actually, I was going to ask. I feel like I don't see you travel as much either. And I'm wondering, and I can assume it's also because I know we were talking a bit ago about um, how, like, you know, you get older. It's a little bit harder to travel, harder to play other than just TOing. And I was going to say if you had input on that as well. Oh, I want to hear this too. Yeah, so I did do traveling stuff when I first started playing. Um, me and my buddy Jeff, who I really grinded with for the part, we went up to Canada a few times. You know, I think I'd get like ninth and 13th place. People like V-Win. V-Wins would be there. Bam. Bam would be winning them almost consistently. Mm. Um, Bam and V-Wins and then Raynex and Kage and then, you know, Kirby Kage as well. Yeah. All these guys. You know, I used to go up there and play that. So I did kind of well. Um, one of my best tournaments that I ever traveled to was, I think it was right after Brawl came out. Melee was in a tough spot, but I was in Florida and it was in Hungrybox's apartment. There was like 70 people stuffed in there. It was one of the most disgusting rooms slash like places I've ever been in. Ugh. But <laughs> nonetheless, that's how you had to make it happen back then. I got fifth place at that. That hey. wasn't bad. I lost to um, Queen DVS. And a DK dittos. I should have taken that more seriously, but game facts <laughs> represent. Game, game facts represent back then. It was all about having fun. And then I was <laughs> a peach player who who chain grabbed me on FD, and I remember that. And that's one of the reasons why I switched off Falcon on my on my return because I got chain grabbed that tournament. Right. Um, and then another big one I went to was round one, and I was you know 
I went two. I went one two with both Lovage and Scar. So I had a tough pool, and I could have beaten them both. You know, one two with both of them. But nonetheless, yeah. So I did my traveling stuff then. Nowadays, I I don't because I'm obligated uh, to do these events here in Syracuse. Mm -hmm. I host I host uh, three or four of them a month. And on top of that, whenever I get the opportunity to, I go anywhere in upstate to a tournament. So finding a day in between that and then like my personal life and you know family and other things, I can't pick a day, let alone three days for these super tournaments that exist these days. You know, right? There's a, a dank ass one tournament, I, one day tournament I can go to. You know, I love that two GG stuff out in out in California. Two mm -hmm. GG kills it. I love what they do with Wii U. If there was something like that for Melee on the East Coast, I would be going to that shit all the time. Um, so I think that's really why I don't travel nowadays. But you guys will see me travel around upstate. You know, still True. make takes names when people come in, things like that. <laughs> well, at least there's that. I'm very glad to always see you being such an enthusiastic and helpful TO. I'll, at just as much as I love seeing Malcolm as well, just because I know he's not so much as into the playing anymore. But seeing like enthusiastic and very professional-esque uh, TOs is always very heartwarming just as much to watch them play so I know I know for sure Syracuse definitely thanks you for all the work that you do and then just as much as we enjoy watching you play so of course whenever we can let you go out though I would love to see you at a major so if you do let us know and you're gonna get plugged everywhere my man letting you know oh, if, if I do you guys will know because I'll probably go all Zelda just for that e-fame hell yeah dude that's all we need we don't we don't gotta be good at the game we just gotta be known yeah, man. Man, if we could talk real quick about your history of wins with Zelda, that'd be. Yeah. I think, so well. yeah. <laughs> so, so she's never lost in tournament, like in a set where I was like, I have to ride or die. Except that squid one, I shouldn't have ride or died Zelda that one. But otherwise, <laughs> it was just never. She never lost against ice climbers, um, in tournament until Diz got to face me a couple times and figured it out. Now we're even, but still, I've beaten Diz Kid Boogie. I've beaten Nintendo in a serious set. Back at AXS3 here in Syracuse, like a long time ago. I also beat Nintendo in a money match. Um, just throw that one in there also. <laughs> Let's see, I beat Maybe recently, who's like a what? Top 100 player or something like that with Peach. He's very high level, at least on. Uh, I think the, he is top in the, 100. Is here. he? I thought he was. I know he's PR'd in. Um, or he's like number one or number two he's number in, one in New Jersey. New Jersey. So. Yeah, yeah. That's good enough. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I've done that. So basically, I think any Peach and any Ice Climbers that I run into, I think I'd be able to, no matter what caliber they are, I think I just know more about how that matchup gets played and what it's about than anybody else. So sure. uh, I want to see that trend continue. Those two characters are just always going to get fucked. Damn. <laughs> Talking to them. I hope to see that, man. And that's awesome, that too, to see you ride or die with trash. that. What's up? That matchup is fucking trash. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucking awesome. Oh, my God. I mean, I, can't, I just get hit, kicked a million times in a row, and I get frustrated, and then I stop playing well at all. Because, <laughs> like, the play. first one stock as the Ice Climbers versus Zelda, you can play, like, smart, and then once you get back aired, like, two or three times, you start to just get mad. Mm -hmm. about this character that's just beating your ass and she's so bad and then you can't play well anymore so it's an impossible matchup so that impossible. sums up <laughs> <laughs> so that's impossible that's how it goes ice climbers you want to get a couple kicks and it's just over for they can't get back together all sorts it, it, it. <laughs> the metal wear and tear is so real oh I hate Zelda oh <laughs> You know damn well Eric is smiling his ass off. Right <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's exactly uh, the kind of response he's looking for. He, uh, he knows how bad, how much it's pressure. That's, that's why it's so good. <laughs> I love it. Well, even going on to that, we could talk about character use. Like, what is it about Zelda that makes you enjoy playing her? And this could actually also go for uh, Airwave as well, because I know you used to at least play her for a while just in pm and then maybe I play her every now and I, play her, I i do the same thing that mana does i played against Isis. okay mm -hmm. i think the appeal with me with zelda um one time way back in the day when i wasn't playing there was some little obscure smash fest in syracuse and i drove like an hour to it and i just thought like i was better than everybody there 
Mm-hmm. So to like be a you know like a jerk, I picked Zelda the whole time, and I, I ended up like winning it. And the the person that second was Beta, and um, the one thing that stuck in my mind is that I was able to get a dash attack combo like four times into a kick, and that moment, several years later, I remembered and was like, I need to play Zelda again. And then the past like, I guess on off just for fun, I've played her. And then she slowly snuck in that one Diz Kid set after he four stocked me the first two matches with my Peach and Falco. I stay four stock, but really it's like a one two stock, and then I rage quit. <laughs> and then I was like, well, what else can I do? And you know, just Zelda popped in. And since then, since that time, I'd say she, I took her more seriously and realized realized a key thing about her is that it doesn't matter anything about the game. All the situations you can throw out the window, as long as you hit your kick quota, you will have one match. It doesn't matter where they are, where you are, you know, none of that stuff matters. If you hit a certain number of kicks and you, you win the match. Now see I got I gotta ask, does a kick refer to a forward air or a back air? Both, Both. yes. Oh see <laughs> that's kind of the expe- that's kind of the answer I was expecting, but I figured yeah. you might you might have had an even better meme on me, but it just applies so much damage and knockback against <laughs> Even the heaviest character, you think, oh, if I get 20 kicks this match, I've won. The important thing about your kicks is that you want to alternate them so that they don't get stale. Yep, that is very important. And thank God she's got all those little weird multi-hit smash moves, too. You can reset Mm -hmm. staleness quick just by getting one of those things in there. Yeah. That's why I believe that um, um, 1.0 melee is most optimal, especially for the low tiers, the ones that have the multi, multi-hit multi moves. Like, let's it's see. the most balanced version. I have, it's to, I have to ask why, because I actually have no idea. What is it? What? Peachy's forward smash and stuff like that. Yeah. There are, it's just smash DI multi-hit moves in 1.0. It's very minor. You just can't? or you're? Oh, you're saying it's very... It's more difficult. So it makes it where moves like Zelda's Up Smash, for example, is significantly worse in 1.02 than it is in 1.0. Because in 1.02, the version that most people play, you can basically just fall out of Zelda's Up Smash. Just, just by and holding that's the... not the case. Just by yeah. Holding the you don't have to smash yet. <laughs> oh my god. And the characters that are affected by that change are all low t- tier. Um... So, so what, yeah, 1.0 is definitely the best one as well for other reasons, like, you know, Link Brang jumps, those are sick. The Bowser Flame Cancel, Samus' Extender. Like, 1.0 is the supreme version, but sadly, I don't think the community is going to listen to this one. Oh, well, yeah, they're too busy <laughs> worrying about the UCF. But, uh, the UCF is good. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> I, just, I just love that right now, especially after Shine. I but, hated that. I was so mad last night. Oh, I was so happy. I was so happy. I was so confused. <laughs> I like. I, I I'm so glad the- you're the middle ground here. I was Billy so angry. Said, no, so what happened is, um, Billy, I, I watched the first two games, and Billy was like, yo, did you just see the reverse three stock? I was like, no, that's sick. And then I came back, the stream went down. I came back, and they were playing again. And I was like, is this a replay? What's happening? <laughs> I was no baffled. Idea. I was very sad. Chu beat him in regular melee. Yeah, but yeah. then he got beaten good oh. melee. He beat him in regular melee. Yeah, he beat him in the melee. melee. Would have been playing if this tournament happened two months ago. If a set's <laughs> over, it's too late. If a set is over, it's too late. You fucked up. Yeah. yeah. That's a controversy for Reddit and Facebook groups. I, I don't have nearly enough mentality to deal with that after last night. I was, I was hyped to watch both sets. I was hyped for both players for an upset and then a counter upset, more or less just to see how Leppin managed to actually adapt within the time given to him. But I mean, g- good stuff to both of them. I know. I think Chu made like some posts saying like, "Guys, no worry, I'll beat his ass next time." And I was kind of laughing at that one too. So who knows? Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully they play again. Well, so I think they reimbursed him appropriately. Yes, I did read that they did that as well. So good stuff to Matt Dodzeb too, who we also had on the podcast let just uh, two weeks ago. Shout outs to him for keeping things ethical there. That was really sweet of him to do, and hopefully stuff like that doesn't happen. It was still an overall amazing tournament to watch. Shout out to Shine. That was that was sick. So the one other thing I want to talk about as far as players go is actually no one on this list here plays a uh plays a quote-unquote uh s tier or high tier we have like chic and peach maybe being like the highest 
as that goes. I mean, actually, Mana does play Falco here and there, so I guess that counts, but... Nah, Falco doesn't Falco. count. No, no. <laughs> well, We've known I, long enough. Falco's so good. I'd be so mad. I'm so <laughs> mad. I wish my Falco was good. Falco's, like, my favorite character to, like, play. Shoot some lasers. He's so fun. Shoot some lasers. And if you, like, are beating someone, you feel like you the fucking goat. Because you're, you're just fucking them up with Falco. Like, all of his moves are so cool. Everything's so cool with Falco. Nah. And then man is so good, but then he goes and plays Puff. <laughs> and Zelda. Just makes me so mad. Nah, nah, dude. Falco's lame. Just always just always tell yourself oh. that. It'll help you out. It'll, <laughs> it'll help you out with everything. Unless they're playing Falcon, they're lame. Just, just always tell yourself that. Makes life so easy. I swear. <laughs> but going on with that, though. Working on Fox. To go off what you said there, yeah. Donut... Jake's fox is something that people gotta see. Or if he's if he's not taking it seriously, I won't talk about it. But oh, that's no. gonna be the S tier oh, character. We're talking about you already said it. We're talking yeah, about it. I don't care. yeah, Jake. I need to hear this. So you're working on a fox so now. You reminded me. We gotta talk about. I've been wanting to talk about Jake's fox for like two years. Oh no. <laughs> Jake's fox has been good for so long, and then he never uses it because he wants to ride or die sheep. He does like the opposite man work. He doesn't <laughs> use like characters that he thinks might do better against some people because he wants to like learn the matchup with Sheik, which is totally, like, respectable, and that's really cool. You know, that's, like, super cool. Yeah. That somebody wants to just learn that match. I can't do that. I'm a fucking, I'm a bitch about this <laughs> stuff. I always want to switch characters. I, I, I want to switch characters every time. Every time I lose a set, I always think it's because I didn't switch characters, which is, like, literally never true. <laughs> so, like, I, I don't want to think that. But Jake doesn't switch characters, even when he maybe should, like, all these, against all these puffs. Jake hasn't practiced Fox for, like, a matchup. He just plays Fox for fun. Jigs never like watches Fox videos or anything. I mean, and it's just a pretty... dirty Fox. Uh, I'm kind of talking for him, but, <laughs> nah, <laughs> but like, I think what I'm saying is pretty true. I know him kind of well. <laughs> and like he doesn't practice it like at all, and he just like it was he did that well against you know in doubles that first set of uh, that last big huge tournament where I kind of dropped the ball a little bit in that second set, but the first set. Jake's Fox, like, I, get, I got carried the most I've ever been carried in my life. He played very, very well. Uh, there's one match in particular that I remember. Uh, me and Pig started out just winning. Like, we both took two stocks quickly. And then um, at the end of the match, you know, you guys had won. And not that you weren't doing your part patches, but Jake had eight kills. And me and Jake... <laughs> <laughs> Just like fuck, because it was against Zelda Puff, and we just got killed. <laughs> it was nuts. Oh man. Uh, I, I didn't think I was playing very good that day. Uh, Jake carried me so hard. Oh my god, I was doing nothing. Do I know the moment when I realized that my fox could actually be useful for teams? <laughs> when? It was, it was on Yoshi's, and Pig went to like do an aerial on on patches, and he just did a crowd cancel down smash, and. That pig, that unlucky son of a bitch, he was holding, <laughs> he was holding down too. He, he got that really quick 60, like 65. It popped him up in the air, and I saw, and I up him, and he died. <laughs> Immediately. A two-hit conversion that killed him. He was yeah. so fast. Yeah. Bro, I got, if you watch those sets, I got rested by a pig within the first 15 seconds of the game. I think, and I'm not kidding you, seven games out of ten. Three of those games was FD, and it was before Go disappeared. set up. Please go watch these mods. I got rested before the first 10 seconds. The funniest part, too, is that Max's word of advice every time we play like against Go, he's like, he's like, okay, don't get rested by Pig. You can't win this. You just don't get rested. I hear that ching and it just like flies off stage. I'm like, Max, you idiot. I do always tell that too. Because I'm like always a prick. Sometimes, and Jake will get rested like twice a set. And if we're having a bad set, this is against Pig. If we're having a bad set, I'll get rested like four times. And I'm always just worried about that. I don't usually get rested by Pig. But that day, I got rested so many And those were just You were tired, bro. You were tired. I, right, guys. I, no, I don't know. I gotta go. Love you guys. Peace. Oh, take it easy, Malcolm. Thank you for yeah, stopping yeah, by. But yeah, um, <laughs> it was so bad, dude. <laughs> it was so funny. Oh, I felt I felt like embarrassed because people were watching. Oh, and then Jake's Fox carry. So back to Jake's Fox. Enough oh, about no. me. Back to this. Hitch it, teams. Uh, Jake's Fox. 
<sighs> oh, I've wanted to talk about it for so long, and now I just don't even know what to say. It's so good. It's basically if you practice, you guys would be fucking shaking in your boots over this little fox. I don't even oh, wear boots. <laughs> no. You know, maybe instead of, you know, practicing the chic uh, down throw, tech chase or whatever, Jake practice the, the up throw tang grab uh, oh, or, no. or flat <laughs> or, or some shit. Like, I think he's totally capable of doing the craziest shit with Fox. You know what yeah. else he could do? This is a... Not be uh, another Fox? Yeah, right, but... <laughs> He could, he could go. He could feasibly go. Um, Marth FD versus Spacey's because Marth is very good on FD. With or, even, or even, or even Fox for FD. I'm really considering that. Yeah, I would consider. Yep. Um, I think the the Fox chain grab on FD is starting to become um, more and more viable. I think Marth is starting to. Um, Lose, um, yeah, lose yeah. its touch. Smash GI is getting crazy. Unless you're oh really, gosh. um, really precise with it. Um, a good example is Zealous. I don't know if you watch Zealous as Marth on FD, but he looks like a CPU who does pivot grabs through like 16 to 32 percent, and then from then on he does other pivot grabs up till one time, and then just grab. <laughs> And you kill, and he kills, gets everything perfect. But I don't think that I'm capable of that level of precision. Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. But with Fox, I feel like I can just do it easier. And also the, um, what's it called? What's it called? What? The jump squat frames are um the same for Fox. So I oh, right, right. Really, I that's true. That's true. Yeah. You know, also, um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah. Free. If you watch like. The like recent sets of Marths versus Foxes, like high level Foxes on FD. Like if you watch, um, I think it was Leffen versus PPU. Both their set at SmashCon and their set at. Actually, I don't know if their set at SmashCon was recorded. But I watched it. I was like behind them. The Smash DI is like insane today. I don't know how any Marths get any combos on those players. The Smash DI, they like every time they get hit, they're like. 15 character lengths away from where they were. I don't know how they follow up, but that's getting even better like every single day. Every single week, it's, you know, people are improving at it. And I feel like in not too long here, like, Marth, Marth FB is going to become like yeah. Fox favorite even. And it's even Marth, for like Mewtwo Kings. Marth's chain, Marth's chain grab is way more predictable than Fox's too. You know that once you're past 30, you know you're going to see an up tilt coming. But with Fox, you could re-grab, you could up tilt, you could um, shine when you're near the ledge, you know, up there with shine. There's a lot of things you could do that are like not as um, predictable compared to Marth's um, standard up till re grab, chain grab. So, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to do for with my Fox. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm going to ride or die with it or if I'm going to. I feel fine versus Puff and Ices. I feel like the. The fact that they can both kill me off like one interaction is exciting when you're playing. Mm. I, I like that kind of excitement where you feel like you can get you can die um, with one touch. But on a practical in a practical way, I think I will use Fox as a counter pick for Puff. Maybe take like a Puff to FD and stall out and like learn some laser tactic or wherever I can be the most lamest son of a bitch on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, man. Yeah. Play just out, um, I'm just gonna shout out somebody really quick. Uh, Noah Leclaire, aka Sam. Oh my god, is a fucking asshole because he commented on the plug post to Facebook and said <laughs> was a good pick. I know, I know, <laughs> so, he was trying to have something uh, said earlier, you know, but yeah. Uh, if we could do shout a segment at the end about what we all hate most about Sand, <laughs> that might be a good addition to the podcast. But otherwise, go on. <laughs> I hate that I don't see him anymore. Where are you at, Sand? <laughs> this is this is the Sand shout-out segment. Where are you, Sand? I hate that I don't see him anymore. Why can't I find you? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a quick segment about Sand. And for those that don't know, he's a player. We're not talking about actual Sand that resides on beaches. <laughs> Just because I feel like that was a thing. Back to the, the things that matter. <laughs> Sand doesn't matter. Shout out to Tron and Taze. Oh my god. No, shout out to Tron and Taze. We hung out with Tron Tron and Taze at SmashCon so Um, much. I don't think people know, but Taze almost made it to round two. He should have. Yeah, yeah. Um, Word of mouth says that he did pretty well. So he could have been a top contender for, you know, placing 128, 64, like top 64, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? knows? 
How old are Kron and Taze? <laughs> oh, yeah, important. Um, I don't know, but like, oh, 16. They're both 16. One of them's 15. I don't know which one. I think. That's They're both in the same grade. Yeah. But yeah, me and Taze, uh, we, when we were both out of bracket on day two, uh, we went around doubles money matching people. And I think we played like 20 money matches. Like we did this for hours and we didn't lose a single one. So <laughs> Taze is the joke. I also did the same thing with Tron, but we lost one to Wen Bobular and some sheep. When so Bobular I can't say this. Fuck Tron. And it was game five. <laughs> <laughs> we take those. We take those. So I think the like last two things we're basically going to ask, and I know we touched on it a little bit, it was going to be how you feel about as yourself as a player so far in 2017. I know we're wrapping up on 2017 in just a few short months, but is there any goals you've had set for yourself that you still want to maybe accomplish by the end of the year that you still see possible? Are there any goals you missed or like just overall yourself – in 2017 you know well i guess i guess i'll start that one you guys um for me in 2017 so far it's always a goal to just beat somebody who has exposure because i think that you know the smash community a lot of people they undersell themselves right off the bat because of all the exposure that they see Hmm. they think these guys are untouchable etc etc well i'm always happy when i beat a top 100 player with like a garbage tier character or i beat you know, a top 100 player, like legit, because it just, it, it vilifies my mindset that these people, they're just, they're just playing the game. And if I can continue to do that in 2017, like at my big tournaments coming up, I know there are going to be some threats. If I can take out, you know, another couple the top 100 guys and show them that, hey, just because you haven't seen the name doesn't mean that they can't play. Definitely. Um, you know, I, I want, I just want to spread that as much as I can always, so... You know, I think that's what I got for 2017. I want to take some more of those names where people just overrate because they see, not because they know. I like that. Just like MACD. <laughs> exactly. Come on. Ugh, MACD got exposed at that tournament. Damn. He yeah. lost to a Tomsk and Tylenol PM. I've beaten a Tomsk. He's a guy I beat at that go yeah, yeah. tournament too. Oh, <laughs> He made a nasty comeback game three. I watched it. He was at like 136, and he did like a back combo. And the last hit was Shine Bear out of Shield. Yes, it was. I love when those hit. <laughs> so, Jay oh, patches you. Guys. Oh, I'm sorry. What? One other one, real quick. Sure, you know, sure. it's been a while, but I want to take the tournament from Jake here if, uh, if I can manage Ooh. one of those in 2017. <laughs> Let's we'll see. see. That's a good goal, bro. It's I'm not it's saying I'm not saying happen. it's unlikely, <laughs> bro. I want to see it actually. To yeah. be honest. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I think you should do it and retire. <laughs> when I first came back, Jake stomped me so bad that I was like, I'm just not gonna start playing again. But as of late, <laughs> with, my, with my character mix-ups and you know some things like that, it, it's been close. So that, that's a goal of mine for Plus sure. Got no judge all the time, so that's always hard. Yeah, always. So what about you guys? Uh, Jake, why don't you go? About just goals or how you feel about yourself so far and what you'd want to see by the end of the year? Um, Majors. Going to more majors. I think that's what it's come, coming down to. Um, I feel like even though I should have beaten MACD, I feel like it was a good eye-opener for me to realize like how to handle losses in such a, like a with such big stakes. Mm-hmm. Like, And with everybody looking. Yeah, you had quite the crowd. Yeah, and it's so easy to be like, this is like, this is my moment. Like, I I can't mess this up. But at the same time, it's just not the right mentality to be going into for events like those. You have to like play like you're in your basement, just hang out with some friends. You can't just afford to like put excess pressure on yourself and like and try and make some like little like, egotistical trip, you know? Mm. So, I think for this year, the end of this year and next year will be. Um, I'm considering Genesis to be my next major. Maybe I, I can oh, yeah? go to that one. Isn't that in California? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That'd be sick, though. That. Not yeah, looking at great. the big house all that much? Um, big house is always an issue because right? school and um, my brother's birthday is always on that weekend. So, oh. Yeah. So I'm kind of cucked out of big house for a while. <laughs> 
Well, happy early Jesus. birthday for that. Just a heads up. Might as well send those. Go to. <laughs> and I'll ditch him. <laughs> no. Um, in terms of characters, like I said, yeah, Fox may or may not come out. It's gonna be a it's more of a feel thing mm. in the in the moment. If I like actually need Fox, because my my logic is basically um is Armada's logic with his Fox. He thinks that his Fox can play at a potential of a nine, but his Peach is always at a consistent like six or seven. Mm -hmm. But his Fox can still provide that. Like you know, I mean, he always goes Fox against H Box now. I don't think he's ever gonna go Peach <laughs> against Puff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nice. But yeah, I don't think there's not much to say, just me going to more majors and trying to <laughs> get used to the tournament scene because I was not mentally prepared for people, like 50 people screaming behind me after every hit I, oh my I did. God. <laughs> it was, if you want to see my hilarious uh, reactions to Jake playing Mac D, I can send you those too. Yeah. I thought about... <laughs> I don't know if you saw the picture, but I'm thinking about photoshopping like the, all the faces in the background on a roller coaster. Oh god! <laughs> oh, it's... my faces! I am like, oh my god! I don't know why I was doing these faces. I look like an idiot. <laughs> I mean, that's fun. life. You gotta get caught yeah. in the the cannon shot. Pretty excited. We're in the moment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, feel free to yeah. send me those. I'll put that as the before the uh, before the podcast thing. That'll be the little before segment. But yeah. Uh, back to back to some yeah and then patches uh, any any goals for you man oh um unless i know you were saying you're thinking about a break and all that but i mean you know yeah i my 2017 is probably like over mm. um basically i don't think i'm gonna really go to much if anything after this and play singles at least um but i had a pretty fantastic 2017 uh Honestly, like, I couldn't have really ask for anything more. I beat, like, I kind of broke into another echelon. I beat um, Goodle Shoes for the first time in so long. And the last time I beat him, it was Sheik Ditto, so it wasn't really a real set. That was, like, years ago. But he had been wrecking me because I can't do Peach Dittos. I just can't beat Peach. But this time, I beat him with Ice Climbers. I recently decided to go Ice Climbers versus Peach and just weather that matchup. Mm. Uh, so I beat his Peach with Ice Climbers, um, and I beat Masks Ganon, but I mean, Ganon Ices is worse than Peach Ices, so I consider that a win. <laughs> um, uh, so, Goodle Shoes, Masks, Ganon, um, Elu, uh, also another good one. He recently beat me, though, but it was at that tournament that I was... Definitely not playing well. Gotcha. <laughs> I'll get him. I'll get him. But yeah, I beat him this year. And then I beat GSO. It was probably my best win. 2-0 um, at uh, Hard Reads, Shine of Punishment. Uh, so that, and that was like my best tournament ever. So I'm like really happy with my, with my 2017. Uh, if I were to have a goal, if I come out of like this break early and you know I'm doing it, my... Probably my biggest goal in the short term, or like in 2017, maybe early 2018, is to take a set off Eric, because I've been getting close recently. Game, a lot of game fives. Uh, but other than that, like long term, probably maybe for 2018, I'm going to beat Jay. Let's uh, get that's it. the goal. Nice. Uh, let's see it. And then, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So I got to just ride or die as climbers for singles, I think. Hell yeah, man. Let's get it. And I'm I might switch, or I might like get a new secondary. You know? Ooh, just definitely yeah, not just Peach. Definitely, definitely not Peach. I want an excuse to not play Peach. Nice. Definitely not uh, as serious as Jake's box switch, but like I might like secondary just for certain. Gotcha. All right, then I guess my last little bit, if you guys would want to even chime in on it, if not, you're free to go whenever. The last thing I was going to say is, I guess, what do you guys love most about Melee or the Smash scene in general? What is it about this game that keeps you guys around? What is it you love? The expressiveness. The expressiveness. The, abil the ability to have, like, to look at your play and, like, and, and label it as your own. To be able to, like, make an imprint on, like, so many other players out there. Even though, like, everyone plays, like, five characters out of, yeah. you know, 26, mm -hmm. you know? And just, like... It's a typical quote from the doc, but like, 
wife just like wife said you can see like every single style has been you know has mm -hmm. been shown there's more to come too um i'm trying to build my own sort of my own sort of style from chic and take inspiration from mzk and fluff but yeah that's what's so great about melee and it teaches you your like your most vital weaknesses i think in terms of your mental stability in terms of um how you view yourself how you want others to view you i think that's great I like that. um I could go next because I think Eric's is going to be sick and I want that. <laughs> um, uh, a lot of people, I feel like you know me, um, I'm like pretty cocky a lot of times, stuff like that. Mm. A lot of people don't like it, but like my <laughs> my friends in the Smash community, they, they would probably tell you that my answer to this question would be like winning and, you know, like feeling like you're... The competitive awesome. drive. I really, I don't care at all about that in comparison to how many friends I have now in the melee community that I like would, I would give up melee in a heartbeat to still like, like have those friends and like mm. to be making those friends. Like there's yeah. so many cool people in, in the Smash community and we're all so tight now and like, you know, like Poon Slayer, me and him got really put me and Psycho. Jake obviously was like the first one. Uh, so like people like that, who I, who I like travel to go see, and we don't play melee now. Things mm -hmm. like that. Like I'll go see them, and we we won't even play melee, and we'll hang out for like a day or two. And it's just like so sick. Uh, Chess. I also got to shout out Chess. Chess is one of my best friends in the Smash community, even though you know not many people. <laughs> Not many people uh, think because they, they see him taunting mid match and they're like, this kid's a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> like my favorite person, oh my god. Um, things like that. I love that atmosphere. It's so sick. That's like my favorite thing. And, you know, the game's pretty sick. <laughs> I like it. All right. And Mana, I guess we're all eager to hear this. Could you frame the question for me once more? What is it about <laughs> Smash? that you love so much i think the i think it's more like a then and now type thing so then like when i first started playing the answer would be you know i love how cool you can be in it you know and how much fun it is like the people that you see on videos like wow not only that are they cool in play but like they must be the coolest people too um so, so then that's what it was really all about it was like having fun and being cool but now only being able to like look back um, of all the things that have happened and all the things that I've done is that it's really a journey of self-improvement mm. um, And the people that don't take that journey are the ones that miss out because it's not just Smash Brothers Like that's the smallest thing in the world to self-improve I mean, yes, it's a game that we love and we put so much energy into it But it's the thing on the inside of you of who you are as a person that you learn Oh, I can fix things in my life not just in this game like I can fix the way I think the way I interact with people um, just getting healthy you know there are so many people i know that try and get healthy mentally and physically because they were inspired to by this game they're like oh i just can't break this plateau you know why aren't i getting better and then these other things open up in their life it's like wow it's this aspect of my life that i can improve and then that improves this one mm -hmm. and then it just keeps going and going and going so i think the self-improvement hands down number one thing that everybody should take away from this game so yeah, I that, that is so great much. i actually like I want to change my answer. <laughs> Don't you love so that? Much. You hear something you agree with so I'll, well. You know, I'll be in situations and I'll think about like how I want to handle them. And then I'll think about like how melee. T you yeah. can't get better at melee by being mad about something and like just saying that's stupid. Well, that's broken. Even though I do it a lot. <laughs> but, like I do it. And then I but, like, now I'm like, I know, like, you know, if you just keep saying, you know, Peach is fucking stupid characters, you shouldn't be in the game. You're never, literally never going to get better at this game, ever. So, like, inside, I know, like, Peach is beatable. She's bad. I can beat her. But I, like, just don't. Because <laughs> I want, you know, mostly for the meme at this point, but things like that. And, like, and it does transfer to outside situations. Like, oh, like, even at my, like, job, like, getting better at my job, I work in, in ER. And, like, just, I think about things that frustrate me about it, things that I like don't know why I'm not getting better at, and it's just like, Melee taught me to be calm about my options and pick the best one, and then if that doesn't work, then there is another one. So, Eric said that so well, oh my god. Yeah. That's so <laughs> It's a, something that we, I think everyone in the Smash community can agree on, just the fact that it's just a, it's a journey of self-improvement, it really is. Um, I think 
since our community is so tight knit and like, well, we're so it is, close. We're close. We're so awesome. so, and, we know each other. We yeah, all know each other. And we know that if someone is going through a hard time or so, like something tragic happens, hopefully it doesn't. But we know that everyone else in the community will be there for each other and that that's how great this game is yeah for sure. oh, it's great so good. and in that sense it's not even just self-improvement anymore it's all improvement everybody helps each other improve it's family not in the game in the other way yep God. right couldn't agree it's more our- i love it that's a big reason i love asking that question i love hearing the the different viewpoints people have on it and i think everyone just answered that wonderfully i think everyone's got a good reason they play the game a great reason Bro, that like, they love oh, it. i wish i had made it earlier in my life i couldn't agree with that too i wish i knew <laughs> like, the competitive drive before i played right. casually spamming down b with pikachu <laughs> I wish I knew. Yo, yeah it would have taught me it would have let me be so much more like smart about some of the decisions like i was an athlete in high school i think if i played melee i would have been like better even better like i i wish i could go back with the things i know now <laughs> like i feel apply that. Them, i know that i would just be better because of what melee us. but you know what oh. there is no restart button and oh, there's only on. moving forward from here and i think everyone that finds this game and finds something that becomes important to their life is there for the reason and it's going to continue to be there for a reason and this is definitely one of those things. And it's led me to doing this, and it's led me to getting to meet you wonderful gentlemen, as well as Airwave, who I got to thank you guys so much for coming on tonight. It's been a blast. It's been a long segment, too. I actually didn't even think we'd go this long, but a lot of you guys had a lot to say, and it was a great time. I hope everyone watching had a great time. JMook, Patches, Mana, Airwave, thank you guys so much for coming on. I'm going to be wrapping up right about now. If any of you guys have some clothing yeah. things, anything you'd like to plug last minute, go ahead. Just thank you. And you guys know where to check us out. Facebook.com slash Syracuse Smash. Of course. I'll be I sure to have all those say, links. What's up? I just like to say, like, it's really cool that you're doing this for people upstate yeah. and, like, things like that. We really need content like this. There's not enough of it. And it's becoming a content-based uh, community, community yeah. really. So these things are going to help us get recognition and, like, you get recognition and everybody wins, really. So thank you. Yeah, well, thank of you. Of course, for- guys. Thank you, guys, so much for being in here. Syracuse yeah. Smash just, pa- yeah. or just posts in the chat going AO. Got to shout <laughs> you guys out. Make sure you follow their Twitch. Make sure you guys follow all these guys, Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, I don't know, whatever you guys have, I'll get your guys' info. I'll put it all in the YouTube VOD. And yeah, Yo, guys. The best part is you did a great job with every part. Dude, <laughs> you, I like, appreciate it. Yeah, donut. Thanks, Thanks man. <laughs> yeah. You got a good stream going. Where did we gotta get the sub button on there? Yeah. We have we have a sub button. What do you mean? We got okay. it. You, I'm subbing. <laughs> I appreciate I'm subbing. it. You know what? I appreciate it, guys. It means a lot. I appreciate all my subs. I appreciate all the viewers. I appreciate everyone that was here from the start. We're at like a two hour podcast. Maybe a little maybe a little less. I don't know. My my time online says two hours, but I don't know. Could have been from setup too. But again, thank you guys so much for coming on. Thank you so much for all the kind words. Uh, I hope everyone had a good time listening. This has been Young Dona at the Bakery. I'll see you guys either next week or the week after. I still struggle to say if this is a bi-weekly or a weekly podcast. It kind of just comes down to who answers their messages. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for stopping by. Hope you all have a great night. Take it easy. Thank you. Take care.